Realistic Owl Acrylic Painting Time Lapse and Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi guys, in today's video I have a very cute, very autumn little owl on a tree stump painting and I absolutely love this painting. In the background for the airbrush I used um, something I've never done before is I put multiple colors into the tank for my airbrush and I sprayed them all at once and it turned out just so smooth and the, just it blended really nicely. So I hope you guys like this painting as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe on my future videos as well. So my background is already painted a very dark green that I'm going to take an airbrush and I have a mix of all different colors in it, yellows, browns, whites, and I'm going to be airbrushing the background. I like to use a couple different colors in my airbrush at the same time because then the colors end up really nice and modeled together and it takes very little effort on your part. I'm going to start my little bird with a layer of uh, cream paint on the belly, blending it out so it's a little bit shadowed on the edges, brown nearing towards the head, really soft colors at this point, soft blending, nothing too exact or precise, and then add a little bit of darker charcoal gray around the head. And then I'm going to take and start figuring out some of the color patterning on my bird's chest. And so I'm going to begin with brown and just sort of create so this particular owl has these brown stripes of feathers that are not super precise stripes but that go down across the belly and then i'm going to be adding some little feathery fluffy looking details across the entire belly i did not go too overboard on the details in this particular zone so i wanted to have a background midground and foreground in my painting and when you do a midground you have detail but it's not as it's not as exact, it's not as fine of detail, there isn't as small of little lines. So for this area, this is going to be kind of my midground. It's not as blurry and fuzzed out as the tree in the background, but it's it's just a little bit less detailed, which is kind of fun to do. It's very, it's, a, it's quicker and it's a little less precise. So it's just very enjoyable for me. So then I'm going to be doing some more of that same kind of technique on the wings like that. And then as it gets closer and closer to his face, I'm going to be doing increasingly um, finer detail work. So just keep adding more and more subtle little lines so that it looks a little bit more in focus, a little bit less fuzzy. And then I'll just keep adding all these little lines. And I have all my colors of paint out next to me, which is something that I always like to do because I... I'm one of those people that if I don't have a color that's easily accessible, whether that means easily mixed because it's already done and it's next to me, or I have to go get it somewhere because it's one that I have in a bottle, I'm not going to use it. I'm, I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm in a zone. I'm just going to keep going. So I like to have every color I may possibly use out and available and accessible to me because it just makes it so that I have so much more color variations in my painting because I don't have to worry about going and getting them. I decided to fill in the rest of my owl's face with the charcoal color and then add the little feather details on top of it from there. So I'm going to take, and I have some black little lines on his forehead, and then a whole bunch of white or cream color feathers here and there around the eyes, on the forehead, on the side of the head that shows anywhere you can. Keep adding in those little little feathery lines. And this particular owl, I don't know what kind he is, but he's so small and cute and just adorable. And I, I fell in love with him as soon as I saw his beautiful little face. So add some more of those little feathers on his forehead. So he's got these great dark and light feather combinations all over his body, which were just such a joy to paint because there's so much, so much pattern and so much interest going on all over the place. On those feathers on the top of his head, that's about where it's the most in focus. So I'm going to take and add on top of the little basic feather shapes, I'm going to add little feather, little feather barb lines over the top of the entire thing. Just keep going over and adding those little lines. They add so much detail and so much that you don't even necessarily really see them, but it just looks so crisp afterwards. Then on his cheek, I'm going to be adding little defined little feathers all over there too and you don't have to do them just with a single color like i said you mix it up you can even double dip your brush that's something else that i really like to do kind of like pouring more than one color into my airbrush at a time is i like to dip my brush in a couple different shades because then it gives you a nice little flawlessly modeled background or mixed paint colors that just morph from one to the next without you having to go ahead and add different colors as actively and then for his eyes, I have them blacked out, but then I'm going to go through and with white, just kind of create where the iris color will be and then add some yellows and some greens over that and some white, very pale, mysterious eyes is what he has. Read blacken out the pupil if you need to, add some shadows around the tops of each of the irises, fill in his beak with yellow. 
and then add just a, some little bit of green on his beak, some white and some brown, blend in the colors, make it very nice and and shadowed and detailed. Some of his beak will be covered up in a moment with some more of those little feathers. So if it's not, it's not perfect, that's okay. But you want it to be as detailed as you can get it. And then add some little feathers that float over the top of his beak. He's got some really long little mustache feathers and that's what I'm calling them. And then I add some highlights in his eyes, some highlights here and there just around his face where they need it. Some shadows, keep going back and forth, add as much color as you can. Then for his little toes, these are very out of focus. They're almost as blurry and fuzzy as the background. So take with yellow and then with some brown and some white and add some gray for his toenails. Just add very soft, fuzzy shapes. And you're also going to want to blend out the line between the foot and the farther out background. So you want to make sure that all of that looks just very soft. And then I'm going to be adding a dark gray to my tree stump. And after that, I'm going to take kind of a gray beige color and I'm going to be painting in all of the different sections of where the bark is. So there's these nice little cracks in the bark. And so I'm going to just sort of start finding them and feeling out where they're going to be and fill in. And if your paint is splotchy and kind of a little less pigmented than possibly it could be, like mine is, which is in this circumstance kind of a good thing, you kind of get that bark texture right from the get-go, which is super advantageous in this circumstance. So then I'm going to take a variety of browns and tans and whites and a little bit of green. And same thing, just grab all the paints that you could possibly want to use, maybe a little orange, and start blending in all of those colors over those sections of bark that you started with and create m way more color variation in highs and lows. If you look at a small section of tree bark, and of course, depending on the tree, the type of tree, you're going to have different things, but there's so, so much color and so much variance in that little, little sample because there might be some moss or a tiny little bit of a spider web. You never know what you're going to find on a little bit of tree bark. So you don't want to just be a single solid color of brown across the whole thing. You want it to be beautifully marbled almost. So just keep adding different colors here and there, blend all the colors together. And this is something that's kind of like to me painting water is one of my favorite things is because it's very freeing because all of the shapes are are kind of up to you and it's the same thing with this tree bark there's a lot of choices that you get to make that make it look so realistic and so it's just so much fun to me so then i'm going to take some black lines and add a couple little stripes here and there to create more cracks in my tree bark this stump is a little bit weathered it's been out there in a field for however long so it has lots of lots of little cracks and dents in it. Then I'm going to take some diluted cream color paint and I'm going to be just kind of dabbing it on top of the whole thing to give it some more texture. And this is a time where if you wanted to, I sometimes will use my fingers to dab the paint on and a sponge might work. I did just do this with a round brush, but you really have a couple different options in there. And then I'm going to take more of that cream color paint and add a little highlight on the edge of any of the larger cracks in the bark. So just go through and add a little, little highlight on them as well as the very top edge of my tree stump. Just a little rough highlight. Add a couple little lines coming down, some darker lines within your within your cracks if you need to. And that's it. This little owl is one of my favorite little paintings I've done. I think he's just so cute and mysterious. I hope you like it as much as I do. And please check out my Facebook and Instagram pages to see more of my art. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.